Before we went to prison, there's four of us. Before we went to prison, we um, we we kind of made a pact. We never try anything harder than cocaine. No, we, we were doing cocaine and stuff, clubbing, but it was more of a rarity. And you know, that was the line in the sand which we drew. Nothing harder than cocaine. We we did a year in jail. And um, two of us were over 21s, and me and my mate Nathan were under 21s. And um, we met up again. And we were always looking for the off switch. So offer them stimulants. So, you know, we'd go out and have our heads in base bins all night in Shelley's Laser Dome or wherever. And coming out, you know, kind of early hours of Sunday morning, just with that total fuzz of stimulants all night, you know, the, the, the ecstasy and the and, and speed just and we tried, you know, went to after um come down parties and smoking loads of weed and it's just also nasty. It was just horrible and dirty. And we tried anything. We tried nightmares. We had a mate who worked at Security Corps and he dropped like a um, a coffee jar full of uh, tenazepam brown and green eggs off for us and um, sleeping pills. But it wasn't the come down we were looking for. Yeah, I remember a lot of lads used to do geez linked us once upon a time, <laughs> like, you know, so. Anything, yeah. right? Just, just looking for that off switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I noticed a couple of my friends who went to jail, the older ones, they kept disappearing, kept going to the toilet or something. Or, and I went around to the house on a Friday night and um, me, and, me and Nathan looked through the window, they were there, there was something on the foil. And, you know, we kind of knew what it was, but we went when confronted, so it was just cannabis oil. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I said to I said to my neighbor, come on, Nathan, we're going to pop. And Nathan didn't move. He looked around, and Nathan was like a grade A student. He was, um, you know, he, he was he was the hardest kid in our year. He was, you know, and um, he really had his head screwed on. He was going to go and work for ICI Chemicals. You know, he was going places. You know, because that that was a great job. Probably still is. Yeah. Um, in our town. And I thought, and Nathan had to go, and I thought, Nathan's got his head screwed on. If Nathan's on I me, mean, I go, it can't be that bad. Nathan never had it again. I never stopped for 25 years. <laughs> so, it was heroin. And, yeah. and that, that was me gone. It just took me off. It absolutely took me. You know, within, and uh, I, I'll say one thing about heroin. It's a very honest drug. Can, can we swear on this or not? <laughs> yeah, you can do, and yeah, yeah, yeah. On with alcohol, it's you know, it's the only it's the only kind of it's only disease that te- will tell you you haven't got it, right? You haven't got alcoholism. But with the, you know, there's a lot of denial around alcoholism. You can go for years not believing you're any worse than your doctor or whatever. Um, but with heroin, you know you're fucked. It's very yeah, honest. Yeah. It's a very honest drug. You know, within a very short amount of time, you know you're fucked. And I remember the first sign of that for me was within weeks of me taking it, because all of a sudden, from this odd Friday we were doing it, right, start the weekend and end the weekend, as a come down, because it was the off switch for the stimulants, it was like a fire switch on the side of your head. It was like, high, 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 heroin, off. It was just, just normal, and that's what we were looking for. We used it more and more for that, until all of a sudden, our weekends were no longer clubbing with, with, you know, lots of friends across the country. It was in a room, in a van, scoring and just running um, heroin up and down a foil. And that, that, that was our, that was our, it just turned from that. And I remember within a few weeks of it, um, I was doing deliveries for my dad and I felt quite ill. I just thought it was flu and um, I went around seeing that my friend that night. I was so poorly and um, I think it was one of the lads I started with. And he gave me a couple of lines of his gear and I was well, like, like, like that. I was all of a sudden, I was just well again. And, and the penny dropped and it was like, I remember how, I remember the feeling of, oh shit. Because you don't think it happens to do to you. It's that old cliche, it'll never happen to me until it does. And it, it always happens to you if you're on her. It happens, you know. So, yeah. You know, and and that that was it. I 
within a very short space of time for decades i was having to pay 20 30 40 pounds every morning just to feel as well as i do now you know the the homelessness came in quite quickly i was living in sheds and vehicles and and you know before the real street homelessness came into it uh, and then crack came into it as well and and that, that was you know the, the, there's things I do on crack that I never would just do for for heroin, you know, not not to put if you know mugging old ladies or anything, but you know the only, the only time I've ever done a, a couple of burglaries was on. Was on. Isn't that interesting for me? You described yourself as obsessive earlier, and I I've always thought that crack was almost designed with the obsessive in mind, <laughs> like you know the two <laughs> things go yeah. together, like you know. <laughs> you know, it's called a design of drug crack because it's designed to give you no satisfaction. There's no point where you think, do you know what, I've had enough, that'll do. No thanks, I don't want another pipe, I'm good where I am. I've never heard that. No one's heard that to me. Yeah, there's, there's no point where, and cocaine is anyway, isn't it? You know, can yeah, it? Sure. But, you know, can, but, but crack is incredibly, the high is very high for a very short amount of time. You know, we know what crack does. But, it, um, and then, you know, injecting came into it. I was intravenous um, for, for a lot of my addiction. I was very lucky to walk away, to come out of addiction um, with no nasties, no blood borns. I think it was down to me being too selfish just to share drugs more than anything. No, I couldn't share my drugs, so it's not much likelihood of me contracting anything. But um, yeah, I, I came out okay and when, when you think of it it is it was 25 years of just looking like a skull on a stick you know eating every three days if i remembered and if i could get into the local garage to rob something um it um it just went like that for a long long time it's just um i i feel i was a definition of a hopeless addict I would strictly say alcohol didn't do it for me. I had friends who were addicted to heroin and, you know, living in quite a rural area where I was, really, you know, Liverpool was our place to get heroin from. Um, they would settle for a bottle of whiskey or something if they could at school. I wouldn't. I'd travel down to Milton Keynes or, or travel to somewhere that I'd been before because I'd lived up and down the country all over. I used to wear towns out, Wolf. Um, I used to wear them out quite quickly because the amount of crime I was involved with, things got on top. There was a lot of heat from me very on top of me very quickly. Yeah. Um, so I'd have to, I'd burn a town out and I'd have to move on to the next one. I'd burn that town out and just go on to the next one. And I never really got any decent treatment because, you know, you go into a drug and alcohol agency, don't know what it's like today. I hear the good, I hear different stories. But back then, you were waiting six weeks for, to, to see anybody, you know, even... You can still do in some places. It's not, it's not ideal, but yeah, it's quicker for some, but not everybody, yeah. You know, it, it took weeks just to get an assessment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and, uh, and, if, and if I ever was in a place long enough, all they want to do is give me methadone. Yeah. Oh, and in fact, I remember my first drug and alcohol counsellor. She was in Northwich in Cheshire, and I was 17. And two years previous to that, it was, it was quite, quite um, surreal, really. She was... She was on our stage at school. We had to you know, sit cross legs on the, on the assembly floor, on the sports hall floor. And she was giving a, um, a speech about drugs. And she pulled out, this, this, this is the extent of our drug, our drug education, apart from Zamo. Right? We, we, she pulled out a fishing box full of plastic drugs and go, yeah, this, don't take this. It's cocaine, don't take this. It's, 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 this is um, heroin, don't, don't take this. And, and we're just thinking, oh, why? Why can't we take that? 